Hey guys, Crazy Postman here. Well, I've been seeing rumors on the internet and some news stories about this that some Tesla odometers may not be reading correctly. So we're going to test that today. I'm here at a crossover point on the highway. Let me, and I'm going to reset trip A right here. Reset. So you can see trip A is reset. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drive to a point. We're going to look at trip A again, and then I'm going to turn around and come right back to the same location, and we're going to look at trip A a final time. So I don't have another car that's reliable enough to do this loop without me fearing it might break down. So we're going to be comparing this to Google Earth. I'm going to go ahead and throw it to Editor Crazy Postman in the studio to explain these news stories to you. Editor Crazy Postman here. So I just wanted to go over this lawsuit in case you didn't know. This has been around for about two weeks now in the news. So the headline here, you can see Tesla speeds up odometer to avoid warranty repairs, U.S. lawsuit claims. Tesla faces a proposed class action lawsuit claiming it speeds up odometers on its electric vehicles so that they fall out of warranty faster. Now, this would save Elon Musk's company from having to pay repairs. The plaintiff alleges that Tesla odometer readings reflect energy consumption, driver behavior, and a proprietary predictive algorithm rather than actual mileage driven. What this guy's alleging here may be true, but the problem is the accuracy. Is it as accurate? I, I don't know. Maybe Tesla actually has an odometer reading on the wheel. I don't know either way, so I'm just letting you all know right now. I'm just going to test on my car just for fun to see if it's accurate compared to Google or not. But anyway, going on further into this article, he says his odometer on his 2020 Model Y he bought in December of 22 with 36,500 miles on the clock already has ran at least 15% fast based on his other vehicles and driving history. And for a while, it said he drove 72 miles a day when at most he drove 20. Now, the plaintiff here alleges that this has caused his 50,000-mile basic warranty to expire well ahead of schedule, leaving him with a $10,000 suspension repair bill. Yikes. So you kind of get the gist without me reading the whole article here of what he's alleging. By tying the warranty limits into inflated odometer readings, which he's alleging, it's going to reduce the warranty obligations of Tesla. Now, this guy is seeking for Tesla drivers in California, potentially one plus million vehicles to get in on this. Now, Tesla's moved this lawsuit to a Los Angeles federal court from a state court, so I'm not sure what their plan is there. Tesla's also faced litigation accusing it of inflating vehicle driving ranges. Now, we all know... This is somewhat true, but really, this is kind of the EPA's fault because for electric vehicles, they have this special driving, you know, mixture that they do. People don't really think about it. They see, okay, so this car is supposed to get 300 miles. Well, really, that's like a special mixture of a lot of low speed driving and some high-speed driving. They're, I don't know how the EPA exactly does it, but it's not all highway. So they'll go jump on the highway to go on a trip and realize they only get 200 miles of range instead of the 300 miles that they're supposed to get. And they're thinking they're shorted on miles, but really, when you're on the highway, you're going to get less miles. So a lot of that is just people not understanding how electric vehicles work. Maybe the EPA could do better on how they show electric vehicle range, of course. Maybe they should put a 70 or 75 mile per hour just total range on the Monroney. I mean, maybe that would help. You, you could put your normal average mileage but then somewhere underneath in small letters say, hey, if you're going 70, this is what you're going to get. And I think that would lessen people's confusion. 
Now, of course, all the YouTubers and Tesla haters have already got on YouTube and uploaded their videos over this. Uh, like I said, I'm a week late here. There's Jeeves. Now, this is a guy I love watching. He's uh, kind of got a channel just like mine, but uh, he's just got a little bit more talent than I do, so he has more followers. Anyway, so I watched this one, and this is what brought up the whole me thinking about this. So we've made it to our first checkpoint. Let's check out the mileage. So there you have it. We've gone 18.2 miles, used 6.1 kilowatt hours, averaged 337.9 watt hours per mile. This is a basically a 70 mile per hour range test because I went 70 the whole time except for accelerating and stopping to film this. And it's literally straight. There is no curves on this road. I'm sure you will see that in the Google estimate of the mileage. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go to the other side of this overpass. We're going to reset the odometer. Hopefully when I get back to our starting place, it says 18.2 on the trip. And hopefully Google says 18.2 as well. Now the Tesla Model 3 is not the model in question for the uh, odometer mishap, but we're just testing it out for fun here since I've seen it around the internet. And so this is the reset point for the trip one. So we're doing the second half of trip one now. So we'll call this trip two, even though I've already done three and four. I said I was going to do it a little bit out of order. So uh, let's get on the road. And I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll put it on the bottom here. We are supposed to be that many number of miles when we get there. I'll see you there. All right, we'll do this one real quick because I'm kind of just sitting on the turn lane here. 18.2, exactly what it should be. Again, the total energy used is a bit lower than it was for the first trip at 302.6 watt hours per mile. Okay, so I'm at the end of stop number three. I'm doing these a little bit out of order. So if you're looking at the odometer, you might not just look at the trip I have checked and the odometer and the trip are accurate to each other. So let's flip around here. This section is a tad bit longer, 19 miles, 6.2 kilowatt hours and 325 watt hours per mile. So we're going to just go to the other side of this intersection over here, reset the trip. So you can see we're magically at the other side of the overpass now. I have reset trip A. Let's get to the fourth checkpoint. Here we are at the end of number four. It was 19 miles on the way over there and 19 miles on the way back. So at least we're being consistent here. We used 5.9 kilowatt hours of electricity this time, 307.6 watt hours a mile. So a bit better efficiency. Now it is slightly windy and I'm not sure what direction it's coming from. It looks like it may be from the southeast. So that would jive with the better efficiency because I'm driving west now. So southeast wind would be to my back more now than it was when I was driving the other direction. Let's get over here to Google Maps and see how long these trips are supposed to be compared to Google. So here is where we started the test. Directions from here. Now let's say where our first checkpoint is here on this overpass. We stopped just on this side right here. 18.1. All right, so we'll say starting directions from here. Okay, and then we'll go to the other overpass. Now this one was supposed to be exactly 19 miles. And we stopped right here. And you can see it's 18.9, so we could be one-tenth of a mile off. 
because the car did say 19 miles. Let's check the other side. Make sure it's not a Google problem. So directions from here. We go all the way to Snyder overpass. We were about right there. 18.9 again. So it doesn't seem to be a Google problem. The Tesla may be reading a tad long. I may be a tenth of a mile error on my odometer here. So I thought that we were going to come up exactly right, but maybe not. Now, this is only a 19-mile test, and the other one was only a 18.3-mile test. So it is coming up short on Google. So the car is overestimating one-tenth of a mile on this test. Now, that is over... 19 miles. I'm going to have to use AI to help me figure this out. I'm sure y'all math wizards out there, that's an easy thing to figure. You just got to use this ratio and times that percent and whatever. I'm just going to ask Jim and I to figure this out for me. If I have a car that says I've driven 19 miles when I've only actually driven 18.9 miles, if you expand that to 100,000 miles, how many miles am I going to be off? Assuming the discrepancy rate stays constant, when you have actually driven 100,000 miles, your car's odometer will read approximately 100,529.1 miles. You will be off by about 529.1 miles compared to the actual mileage driven. So there you have it. My car does show a little bit of an error, but over 100,000 miles, we're only going to be off... 500 and some odd miles, 529 miles. That is, um, I don't think that's worth a lawsuit in my case. Thanks for figuring this out with me. Let's send it back out to Crazy Postman in the field to end this episode out. Y'all probably saw this earlier on the screen. So far, my lifetime numbers are 6,891 miles. We are up to 2.2 megawatts of power. Wow. And I'm averaging 329.3 watt hours per mile. Not bad for having a performance. So that brings us to an end of our little testing video today. I just wanted to see that for myself. Like I said earlier, I'd been seeing it online and saw some news stories. So I just wanted to see if my Model 3 was putting out accurate numbers. So thanks for watching this video and I will see y'all in the next one.